Hey, this is Yazuki Wolf, and today I'd like to give you my highlights for the 2018 Tokyo Game Show. Now, I'd like to start off by saying that I will not be focusing on the major releases or the major titles or publishers, but hopefully, I can give light to some of the less known titles and developers that you may not think to even look for. So, with that being said, let's take a look. Now, the first game that caught my eye was Dragon Marked for Death. But what attracted me to this game was, well, generally the sort of retro feel of it. Now, you can see that the、uh, red. I don't know, weapon of sort that the、uh, main character is carrying has whip like attacks that are very reminiscent of old school Castlevania titles. And there are even puzzle platforming parts where you use the whip to, be, to、um, swing from one platform to another platform. But then in combat, this whip like weapon also shifts into sort of a large blade, or at other times, a sort of dragon gauntlet that shoots fireballs. And on top of that, the character also carries a regular sword, which brings about some interesting combos、um, when you're attacking your enemies. If Dragon Marked for Death sounds like a game you'd be interested in, go ahead and check out their website. It looks like it's set to come out on January 31st of next year. Next, we have a game called Battle Princess Madeline. And this is a game that I am definitely sold on purchasing.、Um, I already put it in my wish list on Steam. There is a, a Steam page for the game, and I think there's also a free demo you can try out. What hooked me onto this game is that it, in essence, is an old school Ghouls and Ghosts game, but with modern mechanics or modern、um, controls, rather. So now I didn't speak directly to, to the developer, but the、uh, woman on staff、um, told me that she believes that,、uh, I, I forget if it was the developer himself or the daughter was actually a fan of Ghouls and Ghosts, and the developer decided to、uh, make a game where his daughter was actually the,、uh, the main heroine of the, of the adventure. And so you see here that there definitely is a Ghouls and Ghosts、um, influence in the game, and it feels Very much like Ghouls and Ghosts in the way that the enemies behave and the way that the platforming um, works. Um, but the main character here is actually modeled, off, modeled after his daughter. And I would say, from just a gaming standpoint, playing it, what really hooked me on it was the fact that I have all that, that sensibilities of the old Ghouls and Ghosts games, but I don't have the struggle with the controls.、Um, because if any of you have tried playing Ghouls and Ghosts recently, A lot of the mechanics that we're used to having in modern games, like modern platformers, like the very smooth controls of like jumping and being able to like uh, um, shift the、uh, momentum of your jump mid, mid air and so forth, those are not in Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghouls and Ghosts is more、uh, deliberate with every action. When you press that jump button, you're committed to that jump no matter what gets in your way afterwards. And that has sort of a Dark Souls feel to it where you have to really be more、um, thoughtful about all your actions. And purists may. Prefer that sort of gameplay, but I did find this quite refreshing to be able to enjoy the difficult, like platforming、um, adventure gameplay of Ghouls and Ghosts, but not to feel like I'm struggling so much with the controls. And that's not to say that the game is not difficult, because I mean, I only played maybe one or two stages, but it started to really ramp up in difficulty with, with enemies popping up from all corners, from, from left, right, and above and below. Like there were enemies on top that were dropping stuff on top of me while enemies were floating in from the left. or, or、uh, Probably from the right to the left, and so forth. So, it definitely has challenging gameplay, but I felt like the challenge was more in dealing with all the enemies on the screen and the platforming and, and whatnot. And so, with this sort of more modern take on the genre, you have less struggle with controls and it's, you can focus more on gameplay, which I enjoyed quite, quite a bit. All right, so the next game that caught my eye here at、uh, Tokyo Game Show was、um, Hardcore Mecha. Which was developed by Rocket Punch Games. And、uh, so this was actually quite enjoyable.、Um, it was a four person、uh, match, a local co op, not local co op, local PvP, I guess you could say. And、uh, you select your,、uh, your mecha or your robot from a, a fairly large um, um, variety of, of different designs. And what was really cool about this is you'll see as we get into the combat that it's a 2D, like side scroll, beat em up type of game, sort of in, in the same kind of feeling as、uh, Smash Brothers, where you, could, where you could jump in there, grab a controller, and start just messing around and playing right away without any instruction.、Um, but I think that it also has some really deep game mechanics as well. I was finding that, so. 
not only are you jumping and doing platforming stuff while shooting in sort of like a twin stick shooter where you could aim where you're shooting at, but you also had uh, boosts. You had um, you had two different boosts. You had one boost that actually boosts you across the screen, another one that kind of could stop you mid mid air and you could shoot from in the mid air. And it seemed like every every um, robot had a different move set. So uh, there were some robots that, for example, I believe in the lower right hand corner in the uh, in the character selection screen here. Um, the robot there is uh, as a sniper, and they were able to kind of take a position on the corner of the screen and shoot across the screen at other enemies. It had a very, uh, it, it's a charged shot that takes takes a while to shoot, but when you shoot, it does it does a lot, a lot of damage. And you can often one hit kill people with those. You have another character, another robot, which um, can actually transform into. Uh, a flying ship that can go fly around and shoot people like Gradius style, or you can go up, go up above and drop bombs down at them, and you can transform back into into a robot and start fighting. And there also there was a, a mix between um, uh, laser firing shots and also like uh, melee attacks, which was really really interesting. So now currently the game is only a local PvP, um, but I heard that there will be actual online support for the uh, um, official release. Alright, so next off we have this booth from City Connection, and this was one of the uh, few Japanese indie booths that I that I came across. Um, although Tokyo Game Show is obviously in Japan, uh, it seemed like a large number of the smaller booths were done by um, uh, companies outside of Japan, like uh, say Hong Kong, Taiwan, Korea, um, there also was a, a large booth for, from Spain. But it was nice to see this uh, Japanese developer here. It's really hard to say this name. It's a Saivariar. Saivariar. Uh, so um, it's a P S Y V A R I A R, and, it, and it's apparently it's released. It was released this month for PlayStation and Switch. But um, the uh, representative there told me that they are working on uh, releasing for Steam as well. Um, but. Uh, this was just really interesting. It's sort of the old school, in the old school shmup type of uh, genre. I've been getting really into these types of games recently, and uh, in, I mean, there's not a whole lot to say here. It is your standard shmup. It's, it's it's just very well executed. I'd say that there is a nice risk reward system where you have a, a kind of barrier around your um, ship, which encourages you to get just close enough to the uh, enemy uh, missiles or bullets to allow the bullets to hit your barrier but uh, not close enough to destroy your ship. So the closer you get, the uh, more rewards you will have, but you also have the higher risk of uh, destroying yourself. So I don't know, that was a pretty cool game, and I was, I was glad to see some, uh, some Japanese uh, indie developers here. So now moving into the VR area, we have uh, this um, booth from Able Game Studio. And I'll have to look more into this studio, and I'm not actually sure if I'm pronouncing the name correct. It might be Abel or Abel, I'm not completely sure. But uh, they had just an interesting concept of uh, having a VR experience with an actual foam sword, and uh, it looks like a buckler. And you also have uh, sensors attached to um, your, your feet and your hands and your head. And um, this allows for a very immersive sort of one-on-one um, -on -one VR duel, especially for Japan, they have a lot of VR arcades or VR like entertainment um, facilities that seem to come up come up every other month. And I think as a VR owner myself, I don't see the appeal of paying to play a couple of VR games. But if you could have an experience like this, where you have things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do at home, where you actually have these sorts of sort of props, and you can get the actual visceral feel of hitting against something in combat, which is something that's missing in the home experience where you are basically swinging in the air. Uh, having these sort of foam swords and shields and whatnot, I think that could be really interesting. I really wanted to try this myself, but it looked to me like they were only letting um, people with reservations or actual like uh, press try it, so I just took, took a little bit of footage and, uh, and that was about all, all I could do with that. Now there was a few other VR things that I tried out. There was this sort of like a hand uh, motion sensor from Cool Soul, which I wasn't quite as impressed with. Um, uh, giving them the benefit of the doubt, it, 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 he, he was saying that uh, they do have a more precise model, but they didn't bring that to the convention because uh, it would take too long to synchronize it to each person's individual hands. Um, but uh, I didn't actually get to try those out. The the one that I was able to try out, it just seemed to know if your hand was closed or open, and even then, it seemed to only register it if you if you did a very quick uh, particular motion, which I was finding difficult to uh, to um, pull off consistently. I also tried. Um, I don't have a lot of video here, but I tried. Um, 
uh, the sort of chair where you sit down and you're moving, it didn't feel like it was quite synced properly for me. And also, I think I'm just so used to games like uh, Elite Dangerous, where you have where you have a lot of uh, thrusters, and this was just a very limited uh, version of that, so it didn't quite feel as impressive to me. And then lastly here, you'll see that I also got to try this these sort of, um, I think they're called Cyber Shoes, and this was a demo that I tried with uh, Skyrim VR, and these are kind of meant to be a solution to the problem of movement in virtual reality. And I actually have a lot to say about these, so I'm gonna hold off and keep that for a separate video, which I will upload uh, in the future. But for now, I think that covers most of my experience. So uh, go ahead and let me know any comments or questions you have down below. And until next time, live boldly and be creative.